<laughs> How's it going, everybody? This week, Waddles. Are you looking for more goat horns than you've ever seen in your entire life? Are you playing on Minecraft Java or Bedrock Edition? Are you looking for an all-in-one goat complex? Once you set it up, you're basically good for life. If the answer to any of those questions, or all of them is yes, then this is the tutorial for you. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up my super simple, efficient goat horn machine. Set this thing up in your world and in like basically no time, you'll be completely overrun with goat horns. You'll have way more than you ever need and depending on how you set it up, maybe you'll even get a little bit of eggs and some extra wheat too. Like if you like it, subscribe if it helps you out and let's check out the materials. That thing is loud, <laughs> like really, really loud. Uh, materials. To build this farm, in the top of the chest, you're going to need these things in exact amounts. Now, I realize we have some spawn eggs here. This is just symbolizing short mobs. I recommend using chickens. It's going to be a little bit easier. But you could also use something like a pig, too. Near the bottom, we've got some supplies for a central farm that you're going to set up. Technically optional. And then finally, at the bottom, bottom, building blocks. I don't have an exact amount for you. Just know that you're going to need a lot. If you wanted to, you could maybe set this thing up underground or something. You know, save some blocks. But building blocks you need a lot the nice thing about this farm you can set it up like basically anywhere you could set this thing up in the sky if you wanted to you can set it up in the ground you can set it up under the ground it doesn't matter it also is going to work on java and bedrock edition there is a little bit of redstone here but mainly the redstone has to do with the rails it's going to be super simple today we're going to build this farm from the ground up which means rails first my plan today is to sink this farm down into the ground. What we're going to do is pick a corner of this farm. The corner can be like basically anywhere. The footprint of this thing is approximately 20 by 20. What we're going to do is start by creating a section that is six blocks long. So that's six blocks. Then we're going to do a section that is five blocks long. So right there, five blocks. This is the footprint for our rail line. Now somewhere on one of the sides, we're going to dig out a couple more blocks and place a chest with a hopper going into that chest. If you're concerned about speed, you can go ahead and do two hoppers. But honestly, one hopper will do. Now what we're going to need to do is finish clearing this area out and basically lay our rails down. Now, uh, when we lay the rails here, it might be a little bit tricky. What we're going to want to do is go all the way straight along one side. And then on the other side, we're going to basically like weave this thing up and down across this thing to fully fill in this 30 block area. Now, in this area, to power your minecart through this whole section, we're going to need three powered rails. I recommend a placement kind of like this, one on each side, one on the flat side. But really, it's totally up to you. Now, uh, pretty much finally here, we're going to need some power sources for the rails. You maybe use lever, redstone torches could work too, but once you're done, you end up with something that kind of looks like this right here. <laughs> Except those blocks are horrendous. Let me fix this. And boom, there you go. That's the collection machine for one corner of your farm. We're going to set this up four times. But check this out. If you are containing this fully, the minecart, when it goes around the corners, is going to actually touch blocks. So you might want to actually clear this out a little bit more too. Maybe consider some torches placed down here too. So mobs don't spawn. As you can see, once we remove all of the corner blocks so the minecart doesn't touch anything, this thing is going way faster. That's good. So we're going to need to set this up three more times. On the side that is five blocks long, so this side, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then on that 11th one, we're going to start setting up the same exact system again. If you have a ton of extra iron, consider consolidating the collection system into one single spot. But in my opinion, four is fine. So on the short sides of our minecart platforms, we're going to have 10 blocks of space in between. On the long sides, we're going to go with eight blocks. So that's going to be one right there. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right there. And then on this ninth one, we start the next platform. Now, just like we did over here and over there, we built the same exact platform. So now we have three separate minecart collection systems set up. All we need to do is one more. So 10 blocks out from that or eight blocks out from that, set the same thing up again. A little bit of work later with our now four gold horn collection systems set up from the sky. We have something that kind of looks like this. Remember, put torches down by the minecart so mobs don't spawn and stop the carts. If you don't like red zone, well, good news, that's like basically it. And back up on the surface here, we're going to place a solid building block right above the corner of one of our corners. Then we're going to go ahead and place a couple more. What we're going to do is position a boat on one of these spots right here and then put mobs inside of it. The cool thing about this build is it's all like basically symmetrical at this point. Once we figure out one side, all we need to do is basically connect everything. So the walls of our whole containment area, they're going to go even with the back of the four blocks that you just placed. You can place a boat down right now or you don't have to. The walls of this thing are going to be three blocks tall. 
what we're gonna want to do is connect our walls on every single side to this four corner spot now when we do connect these walls we don't need to worry about anything right here we're gonna need to leave this block open because of course we're gonna have a boat sitting here and the ghosts need to be able to see the boat so the walls uh really it's your call you could use glass if you want to be able to see in or you could use like not glass you know <laughs> if you don't want to be able to see it it's totally your choice also with our collection systems now set up and running solidly we can go ahead and cover these things back in of course you're going to want to be able to reach your item collection chest so maybe keep that in mind build a way down there but other than that fill everything back in we need solid blocks above the mine carts. another thing that's not a bad idea right now is finding the middle of one of the sides of your farm a center to the middle on one of the sides place two doors so you can get in and out After a little bit of work, I end up with something that looks like this. Aesthetically, I mean, it, it's simple. It, it's fine. It'll work. So, centered on this side over here, we have the door so we can move into this thing. Next up, we're going to set up a small barn in the middle so we can always have goats. This next part of the build is technically totally optional. If you don't like the idea of farming wheat, you can just go ahead and skip to this timestamp on the screen right now. But at least in my opinion, I highly recommend setting this part up. I mean, it's simple. It doesn't really take away from the farm, like, at all. And unfortunately for us, so once a goat loses its horn, it's done. So you're going to need more goats. So first things first, find the center of your farm. Then I recommend placing some waterloggable blocks down on the ground. This could be stairs or slabs. This should be dead center here. Uh... Yup, mm-hmm, looks good. Once you've located dead center, place those waterloggable blocks, go ahead and waterlog those blocks. Then it's time for the farm. So just trying to keep things symmetrical here for this one, what we're gonna do is go two blocks out in every direction and then basically just make this a perfect square. A small square like this is going to give us more than enough space to plant wheat so we can replenish the goats inside of this farm. Now, uh, we're gonna have crops growing in here, which means definitely don't want the goats on top of that, so we're gonna set up some simple walls around this thing. The walls, again, could be anything, whatever you wanna do. I like the idea of fences, so we can kind of see into this thing, so that's what I'm gonna do. And you know what, because why not? Maybe some walls too. So now that I built this uh, <laughs> boxing ring looking thing in the middle, uh, definitely make sure the goats can't get inside of it. Then go ahead and plant your seeds. We're actually almost done with the build, so hopefully by the time we're done with this thing, the seeds will be grown up and ready to be harvested. So that's the middle farming area. Also, remember to put some light around this thing so your crops grow a little bit faster. Now it's time to talk about actually farming the goat horns. To do this, we need a natural block. In my Everything series episode on the goat horn, I talked about the natural blocks that you can use to get goats to drop their horns. But in short, we're basically looking for a block that generates where the goat lives. Logs are my favorite one because they're so easy to get, and also any type of log will work. What we're going to want to do is find the corners of our farm and place two temporary blocks, then permanent, 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 then go ahead and remove those temporary ones. These blocks are very important. They need to be a natural block. If it's not a natural block and you just pick, like, glass or something, the goats will ram the mobs, but the horns will not fall off of the goats. Go ahead and do this on every corner of the farm. Once you do that, you end up with something that looks like this right here. Now it's time for the ceiling. Before we get the goats inside of this thing, we need to put a cap on this. Goats can actually jump, like, really, really high. If you wanted to, you can make the walls of this build really, really high, and uh, I guess that'll do the job, but even more easier than that, just put a ceiling on this thing. But technically, I guess, if you did put that farm in the middle, you can actually just skip the ceiling in the middle. You don't need to worry about it. The goats won't be able to get to it if you properly blocked it off. Now it's time for the goats. We need at least two of these things, and wow, crazily enough, inside of my super flat world, uh, just trust me, bro, just trust me, inside of my world, the goats have spawned right here. So, goats like wheat. You're gonna need to find goats spawning in one of their natural biomes, uh, these biomes on screen, grab some wheat, and bring them back with you to your base. Maybe put them on a lead, put them in a boat, doesn't really matter. Getting them inside of your nice double wide door should be pretty easy. Once they're inside, go ahead and close those doors and don't let them out ever. Start breeding the goats up. Now, every single goat can, at maximum, drop two horns, but uh, sometimes uh, some goats will have less horns. Like I mentioned earlier, or if you just know how these things work, unfortunately, goats don't replenish their horns. Meaning, uh, once they drop a horn, they're done. Or at least once they drop both of them. And baby goats, on the other hand, they will not have horns yet. You need to wait for them to grow up. So that's almost it. The final step for us today is to get our lure mobs inside of the corner boats. To help pull this task off, I recommend having a couple extra temporary building blocks. So what we're going to want to do is set up some kind of a small chamber around this thing that includes a block that isn't on a boat. So uh, maybe something like this. Then I recommend getting some eggs and basically just toss the eggs. Wait for a chicken to pop up. Hopefully I'll have enough eggs there to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Then once it does, go ahead and walk over and push it into the boat. 
Before you put two bobs inside of the boat, get inside of the boat and row the boat all the way up to the corner, pressed against the logs. If you don't get this boat pressed up against the logs correctly, this farm will work, but it'll work slower. Back outside of this thing with even more eggs, all we need to do now is do it again. We get a second baby chicken, and then we get the chicken inside of the boat. Two mobs in every single corner boat will make sure that no goats end up inside of the boats. However, if you'd like to get an advancement, get a baby goat inside of one of your boats really quick, jump inside of the boat, and you get the whatever floats your boat advancement. <laughs> Kinda cool. Go ahead and copy this process over on every single corner. If a baby goat does happen to wander inside of one of your boats, no big deal. Just break the boat, get the goat outside of it, and then start the process again. That's one. Make sure the boat is pressed up against the corner, looks good. And that's two. And so that's it. That's the entire goat horn farm. Now if you take a look at my goats, while I was working on getting these chickens inside of the boats, they have actually lost their horns. That means somewhere on one side of the farm, inside of one of these chests, I should have some horns. And sure enough I do, check this out. I've got two instances of feel, and one of sync. So goats are interesting. This goat right here has two horns. Each horn will be the exact same sound. Meaning, when this goat drops one horn, it'll be, let's say, sing, then it does it again, it'll also be sing. If you want to collect all of the other horns, you're gonna need more goats. When you breed two goats in Minecraft, the horn that the goat will be able to drop is chosen at random. Minecraft has three types of goats, the normal goat, a baby goat, and screaming goat. The screaming goats are the goats that make that horrendous noise. The noise is the only way to tell the difference. If you're trying to get all of the goat horns, you're gonna need both normal goats and the screaming goats. The screaming goats drop four types of horns, meanwhile normal goats drop the other four. Screaming goats are created at random when you breed two goats. It's most likely going to take a lot of breeding, so you're gonna need to be patient. One final thing that I do recommend doing over at your farm before you just walk away and AFK is maybe play some light sources down. A hostile mob shouldn't hurt the goats, but they could definitely stand and idle around, get in the way of the boats. And so that's it. That's your simple goat horn machine. Almost every single goat horn will be picked up by one of the minecarts down below this thing and put inside of one of the chests. If you'd like to convert this thing into a 100% lossless beast, then set up a minecart collection system under the entire farm. If you've got any questions about my design, drop them down in the comments below, or even better, r slash waddles, the best subreddit on Reddit. If you'd like to get eggs from this farm as well, replace these building blocks with a couple hoppers, string them into a chest, and boom, you'll get eggs too. And if you'd like to see more interesting tutorials, like some of the things inside of this world, then check out my tutorial playlist. It'll be on the end card. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, Waddles. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.